Hi, I'm Caitlin e and welcome to the Lit Review. And today we are doing April's Lit Land. Lit Land is my TBR game where I choose five colorful squares that are coordinated with a genre to move across the board to help me pick my books for the month of April. I also can't buy books until I've gotten to a book haul. The other really cool thing about this month's Lit Land is that it is officially the one year anniversary of Litland. I have been doing the, this TBR game with you for about a year. I'll also uh, link the playlist for Litland, Adventures in Litland, up above and down below so that you can watch like the whole year and how this game has grown and evolved if you'd like to. Uh, the first video also has like all of the nitty gritty rules that I don't necessarily cover every video. Uh, but importantly, before we get into the gameplay, <laughs> I, I like to do a couple of things with you. First, I like to say thank you to Becca from Becca and the Books and Cody from Cody's Book Corner because those are the two people that really inspired my love for TBR games. I think they are the two people that like really grew this kind of like genre of booktube video uh, and I just always love watching their content regardless of whether or not it's their TBRs so I always want to you know make space and give and give thanks for them. Other things you may need to know uh, this time around is that I am going to try to participate in the Historical Hellions book club. Last month was the first month I just didn't keep up with it, uh, but this month's pick is Shauna by, I think it's Kathleen Woodwise. If I can get to it, then I will get to it. I also uh, will be attempting to participate in the Buzzwordathon, and the theme of that is space or galaxy. So something that's planetary, intergalactic, space themed, and you will get to be able to vote down in the comments below about my three picks for that at the end of this video. Uh, and the other thing is I will be doing a separate video for all of this, but uh, April is the first month of my new book club, the Book Covered Book Club, and I will also link the announcement video up here if you'd like to check that out. The theme for April is airplanes, and I will be doing a whole separate video to, to walk through what that looks like. But that's all the stuff I've got going on in April. Um, some of it I can squeeze onto hopefully this round of Litland. Some of it probably not. So things like the Book Covered Book Club or the Buzzwordathon or the Historical Hellions Book Club, if I don't get to those, uh, that's fine as long as they're not like literally part of my lit land picks, but just other stuff I'm interested in doing if I can make it happen. Uh, and then I also want to check in with you real quick to talk about whether or not I'm going to be taking punishments and it, I'm going to be kind of squirrely about it. So I had three rollovers, Always and Forever, Lara Jean by uh, Jenny Han, totally knocked that one out. I had these other two as rollovers too. Now, <laughs> bear with me here. I have four more days. Of, of March as I am finishing this. I am like halfway through The Bear and the Nightingale, so I think we can call this one done. I'm definitely going to be able to finish that one. Now here's where it comes to me hedging my bets. I'm not going to take a punishment this month because I'm determined that I can finish this in that four day time period. I will probably take like another day, day and a half max to finish this. I think I can do this. Um, if it turns out that I'm wrong and I can't, I will own up to it and take a punishment in May. But for right now, my optimism is kicking in and I think I can do it. Uh, I did DNF one of my picks, never always, sometimes, but Litland, the way Litland works, as long as you swap it out for something that still fulfills the same prompt. So I needed this for a YA. I swapped that out when, with Clap with you and for Elizabeth Acevedo. We're all good there. Um, let's see, I did read An Extraordinary Union. Uh, and then the other two books that were on my TBR for March are going to get rolled over into April. So they, they're a little thick. This is Lonesome Dove and this is Restless Slumber. Uh, so I am going to try my darndest to pick slimmer things whenever possible for April because I, I do need to finish these or else I'm in trouble. Uh, and, and they're, they're big. So there's a lot going on this month. Uh, I will also say even though it's not necessarily part of my Litland check-in, uh, I did not get a chance to participate in March's Buzzwordathon, which was really disappointing. I got a lot of really cool feedback from you all saying which books you would really like to see me read. And the clear winner was actually Psychology of Time Travel by Kate Mascarenas. So what's going to happen to this is this is going to go on my priority shelf back here where I try to pick the majority of my books from, or at least do a first pass on that. Uh, so I didn't get to this in March, but I'm hoping to get to it soon, and maybe even in April if I get a fantasy or sci-fi poll. So that's where that's going. Whew, that was a lot of chatter. Let's get into the actual gameplay of this thing. Let me just show you uh, where we were, were here. 
Wilbur is here, our sweet friend, and uh, these are the cards that got us to that little red square. So here is the unused deck we'll be pulling from, last shuffled in September of 2020. Uh, our challenge squares, stuck squares or punishment squares, kind of the same thing. Uh, and then our used deck. So I'm going to put these on top. We're going to be pulling five cards and we're going to see where that where that gets us this time. Nice. One red. Oh, I always, you love to see it. You love to see when we start with a one red and red is my romance color. Uh, I've already mentioned it once before in this video, but I have a priority shelf back here as you can only see like the first couple of them, but it goes the whole length of my desk. Uh, and I like to try to pick from there first if I can. So let's see what we got. Oh, this was, this was an easy, easy pick. In my February Read Romance Repeat box, I got this book and was super, super excited about it. Uh, I had already done my March TBR at that point and was like, I'm putting this in April and lo and behold. Uh, so that is The Duke Heist by Erica Ridley. So our female main character, Chloe, is part of this family that's like a little sus. They're all adopted and each of them have like a certain set of skills, if you know what I mean. Like they all are doing things that are like a little below the law line. Uh, and so like one of the things that she's really good at is just like blending in and not drawing a lot of attention to herself. And when her father passes away, he kind of tasks his children with reclaiming this painting. So in the process of that, Chloe kidnaps our handsome Duke, our main male character, Lawrence. Uh, and he's like instantly captivated by her, but also does not appreciate being kidnapped. So I love already on premise alone that it's a woman kidnapping a man. Like I, I feel like that's such a good trope reversal. Uh, and it just sounds like a madcap bit of fun in a historical romance setting. So I'm very excited about this. Okay, draw number two. That's, that's four, Caitlin, that is four. Draw number two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. One red. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But that means we have to pull a stuck square. Oh, read a sequel. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Hey, you love to see it. Another red square, so another romance, and that actually gets us kind of, kind of close. Like you know, it's it's exciting. Uh, but this one does come with a stuck square, so whenever those are little dots are on the board, uh, that means I have to pull a stuck square. I don't have to like stay put. I, nothing else happens, but I pull a stuck stuck square. Um, and this time I I got read a sequel. Uh, so what's nice about the stuck squares is they're not always like really mean. The prompts are more like some some things I might be kind of bad at. Like <laughs> I'm really bad at reading sequels. I'll read the first book, love it, and then just never return. So reading a sequel is a great stuck square challenge. Okay, so I think I'm gonna read uh, Pleasures of a Dark Prince by Cresley Cole. I had kind of paused in my rereading of the Immortals After Dark series, uh, but I reread them so many times that I feel like I can just kind of pick up in the middle and, and not be bothered by that. But that book was where I was last at in my reread, I believe. So I will put the cover up here. I have it currently on my Kindle. So I think that's going to be my pick for my Stuck Square Romance card. I won't go into the plot of this specific book, because uh, there are some like series arcs with this particular romance series that I wouldn't want to spoil for you. But in general, the whole series uh, is a really great like battle between good and evil, but also evil isn't always as evil as you might think. Uh, there's always some kind of like complications there. And it really is this entire world of like mythical or lore based creatures uh, that end up fighting falling in love. It's it's a really cool series uh, with some of the most like original conceits that I've read in like that paranormal urban fantasy space. So highly recommend the whole series. I'm very excited about adding this to my TBR. All right, pick number three, halfway there. Oh my gosh, when I saw this was a handmade card, I got so scared, but it's just uh, one of my replacement ones for a card that didn't come with this set. So one green. There's two more pulls and I'm so scared. 
Y'all, I got so scared when I saw this card because you've been you've been here with me where I have had some of my homemade cards like send me back. So when I bought uh, the version of Candyland that I kind of mocked this up on, there were some cards missing. Um, in a, and so in addition to me replacing out the the cards that like send you back to certain spaces, I also made like handmade versions of some of the cards that were missing. So I thought this was one that was going to send us way the hell and gone back. But it's just a green square. It just moves us forward a little bit. We're okay with this. We're so close to a book haul. The stress of this was really intense, but it is a one green, which means a historical pick. And ooh, I spy something. I just like glanced over at my priority shelf and was like, ding, that's what we're going for. So let me go grab it. So I am gonna be reading for my historical pick, the uh, Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I have heard so much good stuff about this book. Uh, this is one that got recommended to me very, very highly. Uh, and it's and it's a little little wee book. So I'm trying again to keep keep things on the more wee side of things. Uh, and I think it's also got like a lot of letter writing involved. And I say this all the time, but I really, really love epistolary novels. I love novels where there's like letters being written or emails exchanged, you know, just anything about that type of communication really draws me in. Uh, but my understanding of the actual plot of this book is that it's a bunch of letters exchanged in the like late 40s um, when a, a writer receives a letter from one of the members of this society uh, detailing like what that society was up to during the German occupation of their island. It's kind of like the discovery of what was happening uh, with this society, what was happening with this little island during German occupation during World War II. Uh, so it's it's got a lot of details that I really like, like the, the letter writing component. I love a good World War II setting. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping this will be a big winner for me. Glad to add it to the TBR. Draw number four. We're getting, we're getting so close, but there's still like a small chance that I could get punted back to a different square. And I, 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 I'm not ready. <laughs> okay, okay, that's blue. Okay, okay, this is good. Draw number four was one blue, and blue is my nonfiction square. And I already know what I want to do for this. There's like no thinking involved. Uh, last month I had multiple options for a nonfiction, and I chose one over the other. So I'm just going in for the one I didn't choose last month, uh, and that's a library book, uh, which is good because I need to finish my library books in a timely manner. Uh, but that is Ghostland by Colin Dickey, and the the subtitle of this book is An American History in Haunted Places. So again, kind of a thinner one. It's supposed to be kind of like quick pace very like fun. I like learning about like haunted situations. I'm a big chicken uh, so I don't I don't want to know too much. Like if I actually watch ghost hunter shows I will scare myself in the process uh, but I love I love learning about them. So what I love about this and I'll just read like this little tagline on the back it says an intellectual feast for fans of offbeat history Ghostland takes readers on a road trip through the country's most infamously haunted places and deep into the dark side of our history. So I feel like there might be some like more critical historical engagement here, at least I hope. If nothing else, I'm in for a romp with ghost stories. I'm, I'm down. Happy to, happy to add this to the TBR. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is pick number five. <laughs> uh -huh, the, 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 the fear is real. Uh, so the way that I end the game. So there are four colors between where where this left us uh, and and like the book haul. So I would need another blue, or I would need um, a yellow to to get a book haul. Um, there's there's still one outstanding card that could send us back. So I'm um, I'm concerned. <laughs> but here we go. Okay, this is great. This is so good. Okay, okay. Boop. Had to like double check myself and make sure I hadn't pulled too many cards. Oh man. Okay, okay. This is great. This is so good. <laughs> this is okay. In a year, in a year of doing this, I have only beaten Litland twice. <laughs> So this is very exciting. Uh, let me tell you all about this and actually pick the book and then 
and then we'll talk about what comes next after after beating Litland. Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, so this is a one yellow. You're, you're so precious to me, little yellow square. Uh, and yellow is my YA card in this game. So I have to I have to end this with a YA read. That's that's fantastic. So this one, I was really just going with my gut and going with like what I was in the mood for, because um, I have plenty of options back here on my priority shelf. But I've already pulled like two things from back here, so I kind of just wanted to give myself more of a mood reading experience. And what was grabbing me uh, for this month is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. So this is, I believe, a Fairy Loot exclusive edition. This was even before I was a Fairy Loot subscriber. I like bought this as a one-off because I just was so intrigued by this book and it's taken me this long to read it, but it's fine. I know the sequel to this, uh, or the second book, I think there's probably more books, but the second one, uh, The Damned, is already out, so I need to catch up. Uh, what I do know about this is that it's kind of a slow burn or slow pace, like a lot of setup, until we actually get to the part where there may be vampires, but it follows a young woman named Celine in New Orleans in like the 1870s, uh, as she comes over and immigrates for the first time, and there's like potentially a lot of weird stuff happening as uh, as she goes through that process. And by weird stuff, I mean dead bodies. Uh, so there are dead bodies cropping up around the city. Particularly, uh, they, there's rumors of the connection with these deaths to a secret society, and uh, the one of the charming leaders of the secret society is somebody that Celine thinks is very cute, very handsome, very enigmatic. So naturally there's going to be some tension and some explaining to do. Uh, but I'm really excited. I, I think this is going to be a really cool uh, book to read. I know it's not like spooky season or anything, but I was just in a mood. So we're doing this. It is, a, it is a little, like it's not big, big, but it is one of the bigger books that I have on this list since I am trying not <laughs> to overtax myself, uh, given that I have to read like 1,200 pages worth of rollover books alone. Uh, but that's that's okay. My actual official Litland TBR is going to be this hefty stack. So I will have seven books that I'm responsible for reading in April. These two on the bottom are my rollover books. If I do not finish them, I definitely have to take punishment. Uh, these four plus uh, the ebook of Pleasures of a Dark Prince by Cresley Cole are my main five for this month. And if I don't finish them, I can roll them over, but I would really like to finish them and avoid the whole punishment trap I've been skirting around for months. Uh, so, so this is what I've got. <laughs> this is what I've got for the month. Uh, but I also want to talk you through some of my options for Buzzwordathon. Uh, this has been so fun for me to be able to uh, just get your thoughts and opinions on uh, my buzzword picks. Like I said before, last month I wasn't able to fit in Psychology of Time Travel, so that's going onto my priority shelf. Sadly, this did not come up. Uh, no, no fantasy or sci-fi picks came up, but you know, hopefully within the next month or so we can actually get this done. What I've done, as per usual, as my new standard for this is, uh, I've picked three books that fit the prompt, and the prompt for the Buzzwordathon in April is space or galaxy, and, and not in the sense of like, the specific word space or galaxy, but like stuff that is in space or in a galaxy. Uh, so <laughs> this was actually kind of tricky for me. Uh, and I specifically picked books that I thought were going to go a little faster. So I do have something like St A Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, but that is a, a delightfully tomey looking book. And I don't have time for that for this month. So you're not going to see that from me here. Um, but what I will do is I will show you the three picks that I am contemplating for the month of April, and I will give you a five word synopsis to just keep things short, um, cause I don't do that anywhere else on this channel. So, you know, hey, uh, and then you can vote down in the comments below and let me know what you think. Uh, I should read for this April. Now, normally I like to do at least one romance this month. I have two for you. Uh, and again, I chose these in part because I don't have a lot of stuff that has something spacey or galactic in the title. Um, so I had to go with like moon star type stuff. Uh, and this is One Moonlit Night by Galen Foley. It's a novella. Uh, and let me see, five word synopsis. Okay, five word synopsis for this is Neighbors to Lovers Goes Awry. Hey, I did that in one try. We're, we're doing good here. So that's like the five word synopsis for this little novella. Uh, I will say I'm a little scared. 
of this novella because if you remember way back last year I read one of the other novellas in this novella series and was not a happy camper. Um, so I'm a little scared but I'm willing to try. Uh, the other romance pick that I have, I'm in, I'm in a mood, can you tell I'm like really enjoying the whole romance vibe so these are, these are my choices. Uh, but the other one is Starlit Nights by Stacey Cade uh, and this is one of my love bomb these books will self-destruct romance edition books. I will also leave that video linked up above if you're interested. Uh, but let me see synopsis on this thing. Second chance crush in Hollywood. So there we go. Uh, and then the only pick that I have for this month that is not a romance is uh, one that I've been meaning to read for a while and that is The Martian by Andy Weir. I thought this would kind of work like the galacticness. So the quick and dirty synopsis for this is scientists get stuck on Mars. <laughs> uh, this one probably doesn't need a ton of explanation since there is a movie for this, uh, but these are my three choices for Buzzwordathon in April, which again is space or galactic, not those specific words, but like stuff that is in space or the galaxy. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what you think I should read in April and I will do my best to get to it. Also keep a lookout. Uh, I haven't mentioned the book covered book club that much in this video, but I will be doing a separate video uh, talking through the prompts for that month. All right, so let's talk about what winning Litland means. I haven't gotten to do this since September of last year, uh, but the first, the most important thing for, for me at least, is that my book buying ban is over. So for the month of April, from April 1st to April 30th, I can buy books. <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go a little ham. I'm not gonna lie to you. Last time I went very overboard, which is also relevant because what I will be doing is last time I allowed myself a book haul, I, I bought 102 books. Um, like I said, I, I went overboard. Uh, but what I promised to do in that video, uh, when I realized how far overboard I had gone, the lifesaver I tossed myself over the deck of my sanity was to count how many books I had read. So all the books that I've read from September 2020 to March 2021, uh, and I will have to do a calculation on that. Also, since the month isn't over, it's not quite done yet, but I will add up all of those books that I read um, and I will subtract that from that 102 number. And what Whatever is left behind, uh, I have to unhaul at least that many books. There will be an unhaul coming from me uh, probably in like late April or early May. I will also be opening up my Amazon wish list for the entire month of April. So if you would like to buy me a book, support this channel in some small way, uh, you are welcome to do so. It is not at all a requisite for anything uh, on this channel, but I just like to only open that up when I can buy books for myself uh, because otherwise the temptation would be too great for me to just pack that thing full and, and pray that y'all y'all gave me books. Uh, so <laughs> it is open for, for the month of April. I will leave that in the description box for my videos uh, if you would if you'd like to. Again, uh, I always like to say this too, there are so many more ways to support me than buying me a book if you are not comfortable doing that or are not financially able to. That is A-OK. -okay. Uh, doing things like liking and subscribing is super, super helpful for me and lets me know that you're there. So there's many ways to do it. I'm just opening up one additional way to support this channel if you would like. Uh, the relevant stuff for you wonderful people is I am now hosting a giveaway. Uh, so I normally don't trust myself to buy books for others <laughs> while I can't buy books for myself. So what I like to do to celebrate my book haul <laughs> and the whole game making process with you is when I win Litland, I like to host a giveaway. So here are the rules for that. They're, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, I will leave this open for entries until April 10th. So that's a little over a week for you to enter. So the prize for this giveaway is going to be essentially a book worth $25 through either Book Depository or Amazon. And I'm making that choice so that I can open this up to international viewers as well. The three things you need to do to be eligible for this giveaway for one book of up to $25, be a subscriber, let me know how to contact you on Instagram or Twitter, 
and leave me a comment below suggesting a challenge or stuck square. Uh, just so you know, multiple comments does not mean multiple entries. I will only be counting everybody once. So just, you know, keep it, keep it in one comment. And if you're worried about recommending something that's already been done, I have a link down in the description box that will link to all of what's already there. Uh, so you can check out what kind of prompts are already, already present so that you can you know, add on or get inspired. Thank you all so much for being here. I know it's been a wild ride. We have not won Litland since September of last year. Uh, and you know what? There's a lot of exciting things coming. I think um, I'm I am I am honestly so excited and so blown away that we got to beat Litland on its one year anniversary. Like how good is that? Like we have been through so many highs and lows since September with this round of Litland. Uh, this just feels really good. I also just want to let you know that I think there's going to be some heavy duty changes to what Litland looks like. Uh, I will keep this original board for just like pure nostalgia and possibly for future, future playthroughs. I, I'm not hundred percent sure but I really want to change it up and make it more my own. Uh, it will always keep that inspiration from original Candyland because that's what made me really happy about this in the first place. Uh, but I'm going to maybe change the path and make it look a little bit more unique to, to this channel, unique to lit land in its, in its pure essence. Uh, so look out for those changes. I'm really excited. I've been brainstorming what that's going to look like but the same mechanics will still apply. There will still be challenge squares and stuck squares. So nothing, nothing crucial is changing, just the visual of the board. <laughs> Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you have a fantastic reading day. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me or this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.